Of course, this is not business yeah. advice. This is all, you know, this is this is a conversation. Yep. But how would you advise them to begin to strategize how they can position themselves before I got you. You know, they gotta put so, the So um and I'm gonna say this, this has nothing to do with Jay or his podcast. This is business advice from Bizco. Okay. <laughs> I will give you that. Now this is what I would tell you. Actually, top level athletes are geniuses. Hmm. You gotta think about it, bro. The ability to move at a fast pace, judge the movement of your defendant, to already anticipate hmm. what moves you're going to make depending upon what they make at full speed, to finish through contact, know where to place the ball on the backboard, to get it to backspin and to score the ball, you got the nerve to tell me that that black boy ain't no genius? Get out of here. To be able to read the, uh, the defense and based on the moves that they make, you got, you got audibles that you finna create on the spare of a dime in a timeline to win? And the world want me to think that that black boy ain't no genius? You're absolutely ridiculous. What I would tell, what I would tell you right now in sports, do the same thing I did. Watch film, not to watch film to win the game. Watch film to understand human nature, habits of people. Understand that with everything has a cause and reaction. And so, if I'm playing a game in the game of life, everything has a cause and reaction. If I'm scoring a ball, cash. Cash, do you think that the coach and the player is going to let me get an easy shot again? No. no. I now have to expect that you're going to jump mm -hmm. because I hit two in a row. Now I got a pump fake, sidestep, and then I got to shoot that. Now after I play that game, I have to expect that you're going to and then play that move. So now I got to make a move off the move. What does that teach me in business? That lets me know that once my moves get seen, now I need a counter move hmm. to the original move to know, to let you know I'm on top of whatever you're trying to defend me on. That's business. That's why I don't give all of my secrets. Because if I give you my secrets in a course or free game, now I got to create more audibles <laughs> to the original move yeah. that makes it harder for me to actually play the game. And so when, you, when you're an athlete, don't let these coaches and these athletic directors and these staff tell you to shut up and just hoop. You are a genius, black man. You are a genius, brown man. And what I want you to get from me is that the game that you're learning in basketball or football or in track, those are all transferable skills into the business or career world. You just got to figure out what you do best and get there. If you're a natural bread scorer, that means that you have a knack for the ball, putting the ball in the hole. You get fulfillment for scoring. So what does that mean? That means you need to be in industries that feed your ego based on you scoring the ball. What's scoring the ball in business? Commissions, sales. If you're great at facilitating, putting people in place, you are great at managerial skills, organizational skills. You're an engineer in your mind. You see problems on the court, and now you're able to kind of move people. Come on, dog. Don't let, if you're great at rebounding, guess what that means? That means you're great at supply chain. Mm. You can take a complaint from a customer and make sure that they get what they need. I know how to grab this ball and find the point guard. Everything that we learn on the court or on the field, Jay, is transferable to business if people really understood that true athletes, black and brown students, the best way you can learn business in life is in sports. The problem that we have is that parents and coaches don't know how to translate that into the real world. And I was just blessed that at Wiley College and HBCU, a year and a half that I spent there changed my life. If I did not go to Wiley College, I'm not the Jake that you see today. I can promise you that. Talk about the HBCU experience. We we we, we got it. We got we got to just lean in on that because I, I because one thing that I initially learned before choosing the college that I attended to go yep. I, I chose to go to which yep. was the University of Texas at Tyler. You see Tyler? I later, I you was up the street. But I later. But we was right there. Why you didn't come knock on my I probably, door? I, pro I probably. When did you graduate? Well, I graduated what 20, 2011? I was fourteen. Oh, okay. Yeah, we went up okay. the street. 
<laughs> Which around the corner. Yeah, 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 yeah. But what what I what I well what my previous understanding was before, right? Based on based on what I've learned just from around the way, wherever it, where it might have been, I learned it from was that the HBCU pales in comparison to the PWI. It depends on what you're looking for. Go deeper. What are you looking for? If you're looking for prestige, for sure. You're looking for resources, absolutely. But if you're talking about uh, uh, professors that understand the pain of a black student, mm. when you talk about professors that don't want you to just subjugate yourself to what the world wants you to subjugate yourself to as a black and brown student, no, there's no comparison. Mm. Bro, when I was at a PWI, they did everything for me. When I went to HBCU, because we were under-resourced, they was like, hey, dog, you, you, hey, you need to go <laughs> get, handle that yourself. <laughs> what did that do? It taught me that in this world, I'm going to be under-resourced. Mm. People are going to look down on me.